Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Decided that I'd try something a little different with this video and would take the, I think it's Old Echo Road, what it's called now, but it's actually part of the Lincoln, Old Lincoln Highway as well, and just go down Echo Canyon and start at the top of where it splits off from the interstate coming from Evanston, so if you're heading west, and just drive down it into Echo and give kind of a different view of where I normally come up to do some rail fanning. I didn't know if there'd be any trains or not up here as, you know, it's just a little different. I normally come up on the weekends and anymore it's a hit and miss on if there's a train, you know, it just is what it is. But luckily there's one that's coming up. I already filmed it earlier and so that'll come out as well. But I don't know why they're speed restricted. I think they're only going about 10 miles an hour. But anyway, just figured that do this drive. The other thing is due to the wet winter we had, this is really abnormal for how green the vegetation still is up through here. Normally at this point it's starting to you know get really golden, turn really brown, but you know, as you can see it's just barely starting to turn with still a lot of green out there. So that's what we're doing is just driving down. I'll probably end up throwing some background music on to drown out some of the background noise that's coming from the vehicle. And so anyway, hope you enjoy it and we'll see everybody in the next video. getting lucky and looks like there's a stack train here that will be passing as well.
they do run on the left hand going up and down Echo just because of the grade between Evanston and Ogden. Let's see what... I'm going to guess he's got a approach, if not a red. Yeah, he's got an approach. Sure, he just barely got that with how he isn't even moving yet. I know the road is a little bumpy, so I I apologize for that. I'm hoping the camera kind of stabilizes a little bit. They have been going through and repaving portions of it, which has been really nice to, normally in the car that I'm riding is a four-door hatchback, and it makes it a lot nicer with the ride being on newly paved road. I decided to come up to splice this in and you it's kind of hidden with the grass but during winter when it's just kind of bare dirt and stuff it stands out like a sore thumb but it's an old car that's just kind of buried in the mud you know I don't really know any history of it or why but thought that that was something cool to see you know and something different to model you know just kind of in with the river and marsh area but anyway that is the thing that i was looking for and we'll get back to the ride back down the canyon
thing that I like about being able to take this road is it actually can be, how do I describe it, on the west side, or the Echo, essentially, you can either get on or off going east or west onto, if I remember right, that's 80, it might be I-84, I can't remember for sure, but the other thing is on the east end, it's a little different in that you can only get onto it if you're going west, and you can only get off if you're going east. And so, if I'm going up to the Emerson train shows, normally I'll take this road to head up and do some rail fanning, and then as I'm coming home, I'll get off and take this road down to do, you know, the same thing, rail fan. Or, in the case of last year, we ended up, I was carpooling with a club member, and as we were coming back, it was a little later, and just said, eh, we're just going to keep on the interstate, and ended up catching the donation train that Union Pacific, the, at least the passenger cars, that they were getting ready to donate to Silvis. And so that was cool and able to just get on to the old road and get up in front of it because there is some relative speed restrictions through here. And then uh, you'll be able to catch that. So that's one thing that I like about having this road as well. see some cars off to the right every now and then. There's some rock climbing that people will go up and do and there's some even some just hiking trails as well. And down here a little further is a Utah Department of Transportation substation I guess for lack of term. It's a place that they'll store sand and such for the snow plows and that for up through here. And then, I can't remember if it's before the, the UDOT facility or after, um, there's actually a shooting range that is here as well. signals are dark, but maybe we'll find something in Echo when we get there.
was after it. This on the right is where the shooting ranges, shooting range areas are at. And then back to the back a little bit. At least I think you can kind of see it at this point. There are a couple of grain hoppers that you see up there. There is a grain loading area that is in Echo proper. And normally they have a couple of grain cars stored there during the winter time when they're not using it. But then they'll have a lot more during the summer when they're starting to need them to load up for summer harvest and that. But the line that they're parked on that you can see, kind of see them there, they're coming into frame. That's actually the spur that at one point went up to Park City, Utah, and up into you know Park City. But they've since abandoned that and it's now a rail trail that takes you all the way up into Park City. So that's kind of a cool thing they did. Oh yeah, and I noticed, I'm glad I came down this way, because I forgot that they'd gotten a little Jackmobile as well. And then here's Echo Proper. Unfortunately, it's kind of a shadow of its former self with just all the things that have happened. You know, in terms of technology getting better and what not. But since we're down here, come over here and kind of show this grain facility. much it kind of the area that I like to rail fan I do go down you know into Weber Canyon and that but this is where I do a lot and like to see a lot so hope everybody enjoyed it and we'll see everybody in the next video